So, why use Maya's end particles to create a shot like this? The short answer is practicality and availability. If you were doing shots like this all the time, you would probably invest in a dedicated FX solution, like Next Limits Real Flow or Side Effects Houdini. If fluid simulation is a less frequent task, for example, these few seconds were the only part of the entire lab curriculum that required photoreal liquid flow, it's hard to justify the expense and learning curve of specialized software. It can be more practical to see what results you can get out of software you already have and know. Speaking of which, I should mention that all of the surrounding photoreal shots, including the ones that seem to show liquid, were built and rendered in Luxology's Moto version 501, using classic fakes like morphs, blend shapes, and bump maps. At the time, there was no particle engine in Moto, so the most practical alternative we had in-house for this kind of shot was Maya. Moto does have a particle system now, and it's great for a lot of things. It's got a nodal control system that's very handy for motion graphics, but liquid simulation is still a weak point, and I'd say the tools in Maya are still a better option. Maya has several sets of tools that can be used for fluid simulation. There are the classic Maya 2D and 3D fluids, there's the nucleus-based n-particle system, and there's the more recent Bifrost liquid solver. If you look at reference images, you might expect the 3D fluid solver would give us the best results. What we're simulating here is very similar to an ink drop or a smoke plume, two fluids of similar density that swirl around each other and mix at the borders. That is what the 3D fluid is designed for, and with enough time, it might give us the most accurate results. Time is an important factor, though, and the 3D solver can be quite slow even on good hardware. One fundamental challenge is the need to preserve density. 3D fluids that swirl and mix also tend to dissipate or evaporate. The settings you would use to create an interesting ink drop swirl are not necessarily the same as the settings you would use to fill a cup, but we need to do both. The settings are also quite sensitive to small changes, especially changes in resolution. If you quickly iterate to settings that look good at draft resolution, Scaling up to better quality may require very different settings, and working in final quality to start with can be very, very slow. 2D fluids offer a possible compromise. Iteration is much faster for an equivalent resolution, but in extreme close-up, the flatness is clear. If we were doing this shot at any kind of distance, I would probably go for 2D fluids to get the swirling fluid in fluid look, but as we get closer and closer to the shot, it begins to look more and more like cutout. We could render this as a surface to gain a sense of depth, but that loses the swirling fluid in fluid effect, which is the one advantage of using this method in the first place. If we're going to be reduced to using a surface liquid, we may as well use a 3D technique that will give us a more interesting surface to look at, which leaves us with M particles or Bifrost to choose from. Bifrost is the newest fluid simulator in Maya, and for the right shot, it can produce really great results with very little tweaking. For our needs here, I would say it's a little too specialized. Out of the box, Bifrost comes with defaults set up very well for water, especially big water with waves, splashes, foam, things like that. It can work for smaller volumes, but I find that you have to fight it the whole way. Bifrost uses meters as its world units, and Maya by default uses centimeters, and a lot of Maya fields are fixed precision entry. You get three decimal places to work with, and that's it. If you change world units from centimeters to meters, that's equivalent to making a 1 100th scale model, which is probably fine if you're modeling a lake or an ocean or a river, but if you're working with a 20 microliter pipette, it's quite possible to run out of decimal places. You can arbitrarily scale up your model, so if you've built in centimeters, there are some settings you can tweak that point Bifrost in the right direction, but I find at least in my hands, that the fluids still end up looking like big water. They feel like they're moving with a momentum that is not really appropriate to the scale that we're talking about. New in 2016, there's a tool called Bifrost Arrow, which is a gas simulator. So this sounds like it has the potential to offer a fluid and fluid look like Maya fluids, and it may, again in the right hands, do this, but again, the default settings are set for steam at 451 Fahrenheit, which is really very far from what we would need to do. So Bifrost is quite capable, but it's also quite specialized. Um, and if you are trying to produce water, it really probably is the tool to go with these days. But we're trying to produce something that is not quite water. We're trying to produce a viscous fluid that's in another fluid, and we're trying to do it in a very small volume. And all of these characteristics are really working hard against the default settings that are built into Bifrost to make simulating water very easy. 
In contrast, n particles are very unspecialized. They're a general purpose particle system which can be used to achieve a lot of different kinds of effects. There is a water preset, but it's not what I would call a strong preset. It gets you into the right neighborhood to create water, but to achieve any particular water effect, you probably would want to take that preset and do some tweaking. What we're trying to achieve here is not exactly water, so the absence of a strong water preset is actually good for us. What matters more is the speed at which we can iterate towards a look that we like. End particles help us out in a couple of ways here. For one thing, it's not strongly scale dependent. Many of the control values for the simulation are scaled by the particle radius. So if we're working with large particles or small particles, we would still use similar sensible ranges for the control values. Also, as long as we stick to a reasonable total number of particles, it can be relatively quick to run simulations, and that really reduces our iteration time. So while 3D fluids are probably the most accurate match towards the physical phenomenon we're trying to describe, and Bifrost is probably a better and faster water simulator, I think end particles still win out for this kind of shot because they're still a bit more tweakable and faster to iterate with than some of the other solutions in Maya.